This is a couple of toys for our family. Our picky family is in this one. Okay. They're not. Okay. So we got, it looks like we got two more overnight. Oh, really? In Over in the unit? Mm -hmm. How old is he? 17. Okay. Mm. Darn, man. And then what were the two that we got overnight? Um, back there is DKA um, and then a Met Alert for 3 p. Okay. So SME 21. What time did that Met Alert come through? Yeah. Was it was it? in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. um, Which one is it? Um, oh, no, that's not the Because we set one up on Monday that was in 17 C. So that's not him. It is um, D. 17 D as a dog. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it's definitely going to be hopping back there. It's going to be hopping back there when we're back there. All right. So we'll go get logged in for the calls. Good morning. Good morning, Heather. How are you? Great. Hey. How are you? Good. All right. Thank you. Um, go with you, Melody. Hey, good morning. We have um, seven kids this morning. We are also um, about to admit a kid that's going to be a transfer. So that's going to put us at eight. We um, may need to think about putting kids over an A, um, especially if we get down to that um, one code bed situation. So we may need to uh, reach out and talk about that, especially over the next day or two, depending on um, you know what the what the continued census is. So wanted to put that back in everybody's ear um, as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. So be in touch if you need anything, and I'll be ready to to start moving that way um, if we get more admissions. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Okay. All right, so did the kiddo make it? He's coming, but we're about to party over it in here. Oh, okay. Well, that's no fun. Hi. How are you? Good. ECMO and COVID, and then they're going to take photos of everything with the patient's face. All right. Okay. The ECMO is certainly our most challenging um, environment back here because of the amount of people um, that it takes to run a um, ECMO machine. We do have to have people at the bedside 24 hours. Um, it takes two to one nursing on um, this patient population. Um, this patient um, presented with um, a seizure at home and um, came in with um, ended up being positive for pneumonia and positive for COVID. And since then, has led to um, respiratory failure, to where she requires some intubation um, so we could ventilate her properly, and therefore we had to um, support her um, on VV ECMO. So what ECMO is doing for this patient is allowing her lungs to rest and heal while we actually do the work of her lungs. We are helping her oxygenate, um, and therefore circulate her blood with oxygenated blood throughout her body. So basically it's giving her time um, to be able to rest and to heal. I've worked at Cook for 23 years as a nurse, and as I be, uh, took this role as a manager with the ECMO program, it's just it's my continued drive to do what's best for the kids and provide any level of care that they need. Um, so ECMO is the highest form of medical treatment that we offer here at Cook Children's, and it requires a lot of training. Um, and to be able to facilitate that and be an active part in that is very meaningful to me. 
I recently joined the Expo team, and it was because I've gotten to watch these ladies do the job for so long. It's something special to be able to take care of the kids when they're so sick, when their parents unfortunately can no longer give them the care they need, so then it's up to us and our team in the ICU, and then even more specifically the ECMO team itself. It's a great camaraderie, like um, Shana said, to be able to work with each other to help these kids, because it's kind of like the last line of defense, um, the last chance that these kids have, and so we fight every day, every night, just to make sure that these kids can make their way through to get to the point where they can get better on their own. Um, it can be pretty taxing, physically, um, mentally, and emotionally, um, but again, these kids are warriors. It's why we push through. It's why we come out of here sweating bullets and having held our bladder for hours after hours. Um, but this is this is what we do. And if it were my kid, I would want somebody to be the same. So the reason I have these things on my face is because of the N95. It puts so much pressure on my nose and my ears. And so, and like behind my ears. So I actually have four, five Mepilex on my face, on my, on my ears. So I have one, two, and then three right here. You can kind of see it's like transparent. I was so scared. Um, and especially affecting the Hispanic population, it worries me um, for my family. Um, but, um, I think with time, the more we know about it, um, you kind of, it eases your mind a little bit, but the uncertainty of it, it really is what makes it scary. In the beginning, back in March, it was very scary and difficult. Um, my kids have only known me as a nurse, so um, they know mommy comes home, we have dinner, things like that, and then when the pandemic hit, it was mom needs to take a shower first, mom needs to do a lot of things to debrief on her own. And then we, then we can talk and hug and do all the things. So it's been a little bit different. I do have older kids. I have a 14 year old who watches the news and he, he worries more than the younger ones because he sees what, what's happening on the news. And he's like, mommy, is that happening at work? And I'm like, to an extent. Our patients are often on for weeks. And so this isn't just a two to three day thing. This is prolonged taking care of your staff and making sure they have the endurance and the mental fortitude to keep going even when things, um, continue to seem to never end. We've had patients that are spread the gamut. Some are really not that sick and they're just here for a few days for oxygen support and like that. And then we've had kids that have been really sick up here. And um, it's just different with almost every single case. Some of the stuff that we're seeing are, um, it's just very different. We knew what to expect a lot with our regular population. So we have 20 beds and currently we are quite full. We have 17 patients today. So we have four negative pressure rooms on the unit. Um, and then uh, facilities was, they were actually able to um, make the remainder of our rooms um, neutral pressure. This is our, one of our ante rooms in between our negative pressure rooms. So this is where nurses can um, take off their isolation gear. It's pretty amazing how everyone has adapted, you know, not just in healthcare, but in everything. It makes you realize what we're capable of. Yes. You know, be, because before, Think, think how many things we did that were so monotonous and silly. Not a single day is the same, and we, we really just roll with the punches and um, lots of teamwork, um, lots of moral support for each other just with not knowing what to expect or what's next. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's been a year of changes and rolling up our sleeves and just doing the best we can. Rebecca has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, we tease because she literally wipes walls nonstop. She never sits. She has kept every single one of us safe. Even when we weren't very full, she, and it was her day to work up here, she was in every room just remopping, re-cleaning, 
just like she would do as if we had turned the room over for a new patient. We have to take care of each other. We're she happy. takes care of us. Our nurses truly honor, it, it makes me tearful, but they honor our promise every single day. Like these nurses are just so resilient. They care for these kids like they're their own. It's truly amazing.